What up YouTube? Time to brew some beer. Today I'm going to be brewing a basic cream ale and I'm going to be adding Captain Crutch. So I got all the grains that I need. I got my yeast starter going. My home brew. Got to be drinking one to make one. So what I did was I bought the Liberty Cream Ale kit uh, as a starter because it's a basic cream ale. And then I'm going to be adding a whole bunch of Captain Crunch to it. So let's get this started. Now I got my brew house set up, um, heating up my strike water, got my high speed uh, deep sink. I'm gonna just flush out all the lines. I have fresh water rinse, you know, all the all the pots before I use them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flood the system here to get all these lines filled up. Get this up to 168. That allows me to mash in and hit 152, which is what I'm gonna be trying to mash in. I can't wait till I can finally go all electric. I will deal with all this crap and all that crap. Once I get three gallons of water in here, I'm gonna throw in the grains, check the temperature. I'm gonna fill this one back up to get this to 154, which is where this needs to be to keep my mash on at 152. And then for this recipe, we also have flake maize. Now for the magic ingredient, we'll see. Good year. Now, the recipe does not account for 40 ounces of Cap Crunch. So, we're going to have to get some adventurous territory here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run an extra gallon of water in here. I love it when it works out. Right at 152 with the temperature drop. So now we're going to get this to uh, the required 154 to maintain temperature. And I'm going to start my mash timer. Sorry, that was rude. I'm going to start my mash timer. So now we're going to switch out our plumbing. Uh, so we can start recirculation, cut that off, pulling from the mash tun, make sure that's open. That's one of the many reasons why I want to switch to all electric. My gas ran out while I'm mashing. I knew it was low, but but I didn't know how much I had, I had left. Obviously, this stuff's expensive, so I don't want to waste it. But that just caused a uh, caused a temperature drop. So now I'm going to have to extend my mash time. Got this thing blazing. And, uh, we got to get this. We dropped down to 150, so we need to get this back up to 154. More importantly, we got to get this back up to 152. All right. We uh, added the extra time that was required for the mash. Smells like beer with Captain Crunch. <laughs> I don't know what I expected in there. And now we're going to start bringing our sparge water up to temperature. Our mash out is at 170. So crank the flame. Sparge water is at temperature. So we're going to cut up and set up for sparge. You two things. I'm trying to match the flow rate there with the flow rate going into here. Another thing I do, the reason why I use this clamp is because I can tell if the water, if the wort level drops lower or higher than, um, than where it's at right now, then I know that my flow rate's off and I need to adjust the valves. We're at uh, we're just, just under six gallons, five and a quarter, five and three quarter gallon. Um, the packet comes with this corn sugar. It's automatically in there. It's five ounces um, for carbonation. I force carbonate. 
So we're just gonna add this to the boil. And we'll just let that ferment out for extra alcohol. So now is when I start watching the level in here to make sure that as I'm finishing up, I'm not finishing with a bunch of uh, excess fluid in here. I want to get the last bits out. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached a nice rolling boil. It's time for our first top edition. This is one ounce of Cascade. And we start our boil time. Uh, 15 minutes left in the boil. So the two things we do right now is we add a workflow tablet. I gotta buy more workflow tablets. Um, that's a finishing agent, just to make the beer a little bit clearer. And, nope, not that. And we're gonna add our, uh, I'm gonna add the work chiller to start to sanitize it. I don't know if this is over cautious, but I also like to run the boiling water through the pump just to sterilize this entire system before I actually cut off the flame. Two minutes left, so final one ounce of uh, Cascade for flavor. Gonna let that go for two minutes, uh, then we're gonna kick on the work chiller. Flame it. As you can see, you got a good bubbling fermentation going on there. Um, our expected recipe starting gravity was supposed to be about 1.04, uh, but that doesn't account for the priming sugar that I added or the cap to crunch. So we hit 1.054 for our starting gravity. We're going to shoot for 1.014-ish to finish, but I'm going to go based on flavor. So. We'll let this bad boy go, give it about a week, and then I'll pull my first taste. So this fermented out way faster than expected. Uh, seven days in, we, we were shooting for a final gravity of 1.014. Seven days in, it was at 1.004. So I cold crashed it at that point to, uh, to stop the fermentation process and uh, let it sit for about a day. And now I'm getting ready to rack it into a keg and uh, put it back on, you know, let it age for about 30 days. But the flavor is very good, so no complaints there. So there we go. We're gonna let it age for 30 days or so, and um, who knows, by then it should be nice and clear. So here it is, the Cotton's Ale. Came out at 6.6%. And uh, I know you can't taste it through the camera, but it is delicious. So, this is a nice summer brew. It has a little bit of aroma of the Captain Crunch, uh, but there's a little bit of taste there, not too strong. It's not too sweet. But when I tell people I brewed it with Captain Crunch, they're like, yeah, I can taste it. So, Definitely gonna be making this one again. Uh, cereal brews are gonna become part of my repertoire. Count Chocula, Frankenberry, Fruity Pebbles. I'm looking in your direction. <laughs>